Hey everyone, this is Vickerman, and welcome to Halcyon 6 Star Based Commander. This is a game that I saw uh, a couple people playing, and it's uh, pretty cool because after I had saw it, I was like, well, that might be worth checking out. Uh, I did end up receiving a code from the developer, so I can now share it with all of you! Isn't that great? So, uh, if you haven't heard about this game, uh, it is. Uh, sort of an independently developed RPG sort of thing in space. And you'll see what I mean by that. Has a bit of XCOM, has a bit of JRPG stuff, uh, and all that kind of thing. So we've got the main campaign and skip prologue, so that will just uh, skip us to the pro the main game, actually. Five difficulty levels, which is actually kind of... Uh, yeah, that's actually a pretty sizable amount, really. Uh, considering that it's not not a huge scale game as far as development wise, so that's pretty nice. Uh, obviously, Commander is sort of, if you think about it, uh, as the neutral difficulty level, and then things are easier here, and they're harder up here with Captain and Admiral. So we're just gonna stick with the base game. I mean, I think, uh, I think I understand enough about these sort of games to probably figure this out. But we'll see if that's the case. Played for probably an hour or so already, so have some idea of what's going on. But uh, as as we know, with games such as this, they tend to open up over time. So there'll be some stuff that I'm exploring with you on this uh, series here. Uh, we'll be playing this for a little while. We'll see how far we can get here. Uh, and we will just see how it goes for us. So for half a millennium, the spacefaring races of the galaxy fought conspired against one another for supremacy, but it was the Terran Federation through the ingenuity and bravery of its officer class that ultimately prevailed. Through the discovery and utilization of ancient artifacts left over from a long dead precursor alien race, they put an end to the disastrous series of wars between the factions. One of these precursor artifacts is your home, Halcyon 6. You might think of it as uh, sort of the same idea as the Mass Effect Citadel, because in the Mass Effect Citadel, of course, the Citadel is an ancient space station from a precursor race that the people uh, people occupy and refurbish for their own uses, which is exactly what we're doing. Crown Jewel of the Terran Precursor discoveries of Starbase X is the Federation's home base in the Halcyon Sector. Is it Halcyon or Halcyon? I think I've heard both. It might be one of those things where there's a British way of saying it and an American way of saying it. Commanded by Admiral Wo Brahmachandra, the Federation's most decorated officer, protected by the 12th Fleet, the Starbase is permanently staffed with a variety of Federation officers with a mission of unlocking its mysteries. Today, however, the station has received some unwelcome news. A garbled hypercast ordering the 12th Fleet's return to Federation space with the intention of returning as soon as possible to continue the work on the experiment. Or it's in quotes, so should it be the experiment? Admiral Brahmachandra leaves you in charge of the station. For powerful whoop. Okay. So there we are, and then they're headed over there. Admiral, we've arrived at the rendezvous point. There's no sign of welcoming force. No hypercast signals detected either. Think we're early? Broaden your signal detection, Captain. The 4th and 8th fleets are expected to join us as well. That's a nice looking ship right there. Uh, and those Titan class ships should be hard to miss. Admiral, I'm picking up something. Definitely not Federation at origin. Some kind of... Whatever it is, is getting stronger, sir. And our entire spaceships are rocking back and forth. I've never seen anything like this before, sir. Some kind of portal. Like a wormhole. Admiral, I'm suddenly getting multiple ship readings all heading for our position. They must be coming out of that thing. Hmm. Unknown hostiles. I repeat, unknown hostiles. We might have to get a little creative here. Commander, they're powering up their weapons. We should take the initiative and attack first. Click on the highlighted button to attack with the incisor beam. So this battle is pretty much scripted. So it's telling us how things work. So we're gonna use the incisor beam, target you. Shazam. Next, we'll use the backstab maneuver to inflict ship disabled and prevent your enemy from attacking. 
So you can see when we go to, uh, this is actually incidentally uh, very similar to the way combat works in Darkest Dungeon. You have a couple different uh, skills here that all do different things. And you upgrade and pick them as you get your your officers to higher and higher levels of expertise. Ship dazed. Now select a drone swarm to attack all enemies at once. Okay, so this will inflict drone swarm. 0%, that's strange. Uh, some enemies have resistances. You can right click on an enemy to view their vulnerabilities. Okay, but right now we don't we don't really know that. The ocular vessel seems to be powering up a large attack. Shield yourself with a protective field to mitigate the damage. Okay. Shields up. 25% uh, damage reduction. Uh, ship is disabled. Use a bridge shot to combo and exploit. So that each move, well, some moves exploit certain statuses. There's actually quite a few different statuses. We'll see more as we go. And you see we did, got bonus damage for exploiting it. Don't get too cocky, Commander. Fire at will. Select the acid bombs to attack your enemies doing damage over several rounds. That makes a lot of sense. That's a lot of them. That seemed excessive. Oh no. All right, when ships are in critical condition, any further damage could result in complete destruction. Use cauterize hull. Now select strafing run to try and finish them off. All enemies. Uh, repair drone overdrive to repair. So this is a self, no? Okay, so you can select different ones. I would assume that, I would have, has, would have assumed that that kind of move would just be um, self heal. Make it count, commander. Shazam. It's not repaired immediately, it might be destroyed. The Warlock's cauterized hull repair power has no more uses. Your only hope is to use status lock to disable the enemy. Which one? This one here? Well, there is a turn order. Did we see that in this battle? No, we don't see it in this battle. Wow, that, okay. We've lost a ship. Oh no. Number one, no. You chitinous bastards. Very good. Admiral, we're picking up more of those portals. Okay, that is not good. That is not good. We're holding on by a sliver. Need to jump now back to Halcyon 6. Oh no. What is that? That thing. Jump now for God's sake, jump now. We seem to have lost our hypercast link with Admiral Brahmachandra and the 12th fleet. Halcyon 6. Stop it, Commander. Well, that is no good. They took all of our best stuff. You and your crew are stranded in hostile alien territory, cut off from resupply and desperate need of more crew. You have little choice but to continue working on Admiral Brahmachandra's experiment to try to unlock the power of the station. Enemies may soon catch wind of the Federation's weakness. Use that as an opportunity to strike and claim the station for themselves. 
Choose your first officer. All right. Uh, we got Lucas Beaumont, a science officer, formerly a prestigious academician at the new Kharkiv University. Lucas Beaumont elected to leave its relative safety to join Federation Command after losing a debate with himself in a series of dreams he had after tinkering with some meta-universal barrier weak spots. At least he thinks it was himself. Nonetheless, he's found that being in likely death situations helps cure him of his sometimes crippling social awkwardness in ways that even the best Adreno stems can't replicate. That's pretty detailed uh, backstory. C Corbain Lau. Corbain Lau was born aboard the TFS Tamerlane in the middle of a warp jump, leading him gaining, leading to him gaining the dreaded epithet Warp Baby, which followed him from kindergarten through to ac academy prep. That's a terrible nickname. Anything with baby in it. His deep-seated resentment to that fact has led him to cultivate an almost impossibly optimistic disposition while his inner thoughts are left only to himself and to the counselor aboard the ship under his command. Okay. We have a sold freehold. Considered a technological prodigy at a young age, a sold freehold at the age of five was the youngest student ever admitted to the Academy of Engineers. At age 16, she purposely disfigured herself transplanting some home-cooked cyborg appendages to key parts of her anatomy, leading to several psych examinations, which she, with the help of her newfound processing power, passed with flying colors. That's insane. Uh, so, I don't know that it matters too much, because we will get uh, more folks with each role. Um, I want to eventually get all of the roles here in my fleet here. At least one of each, I think. Uh, we'll want to do that as soon as we can. Uh, but... Let's just uh, go with the science officer first. That'll make sense. Science officers are the most creative and academically brilliant officers in the Federation. Their power repertoire often consists of area of effect attacks, quick hitting attacks, and debuffing attacks. While their buff powers can heal or protect friendly units. In space combat, science officers are able to command science ships, which are the fastest hitting of the three ship classes. Well, let's, uh, let's read this, though. Tactical officers are the most daring and quick-thinking officers in the Federation. Power repertoire consists of sneak attacks, immobilization attacks, and combo attacks, while their buffs can often aim and damage boosts. Uh, able to command tactical ships are the hardest hitting of the three ships. And we have engineers, the toughest and mechanically minded officers. Their power repertoire often gives damage over time, hard hitting attacks, and taunts, while buffs often protect itself from harm. Command engineering ships, which have the toughest hull of the three. All right, well, we will go with the uh, science to start off with. But again, we shall, uh, we shall endeavor to expand as soon as we can. A fleet is coming our direction. The signal suggests a pirate origin. We should expect them to arrive here in 48 hours. In the case of hostilities, the experiment may be our only hope to defend ourselves. The crew will work around the clock to make the necessary pre preparations. Just entered our space as a single pirate ship, likely hostile, passing them through. Federation Starbase. Uh, this is Rarzub Toe Slicer McCormick. Our scouts detected the departure of your fleet over a week ago. You're now at the mercy of Ad Admirax Zeb and the Zealots clan. Hand over the starbase. Allow you to return to Federation space. Comply or we commence orbital bombardment. Uh, this is a scenario screen. Will appear during missions that require key decisions. In this case, the part fleet is demanding your surrender. Choose the response below. And you should choose to reject the surrender. Well, thanks, buddy. I forgot. You federales love your precursor toys. Prepare for bombardment, Federation scum. Light of the development, we should begin initializing experimental starship creation process. So click it there. And we shall make a acolyte ship for the science. Construction. 
So now we need to go and skip time. This is the part that is much... This is kind of like XCOM with your scanning. Uh, and you'll see that the base is like an XCOM base as well. Here it is. Let's click old Lucas Beaumont. So, click it there, send a fleet. We shall use him. And launch. I shall attack you. All right, so we got portal cannon. This exploits a hull breach. Uh, but it's otherwise a just a useful ability. Then we have upload virus. All right, so we'll just use this, I think. Should be the most damaging. Uh, like I say, well, I didn't say, but I'm about to say, we have did sensors offline, which makes him have 30% less aim. And we're so quick, we got two turns in a row. That was nice. Your attacks are useless against me. So that was, well, we're not done yet. Oh, did the starship attack? And that is that pirate scum. I'm not proud to admit it. Destroying that space pirate felt oddly fulfilling. The long range hypercast, putting it through now. I don't believe we met. Feel free to refer me as the Admirax, title that denotes my supreme command over the pirate clans. Now, Commander, or should I say Acting Commander, my spies tell me I should congratulate you on your new post. They've also informed me that your fleet has fled the sector, leaving you on your own. And so I'm giving you the courtesy of informing you that we'll be visiting you very soon, as this is my territory, and so your station now belongs to me. And unlucky for you, I've united all the pirate clans to help me take it. I highly suggest you turn tail and return to Federation space. If you are of another mind, stay where you are and prepare for your deaths. All right, Chi Chez Slob Choker Grunwald. I will invent, avenge the death of Rarzub Toe Slicer and deliver the station to the Admirax. To explain, you'll soon be floating, helpless, in the vast expanse of space. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the explanation. I barely felt it. <laughs> we can heal if we need to, which is nice. Spray and pray. Spray and pray. You know what? Yeah, these guys are real weak. They only got 200 health, which is really, really poor. I'm not even scared. I'm not even scared at all. Yeah. Well, we might as well heal. <laughs> Barely felt that one. <laughs> All right, you. This ship is pretty darn evasive, I must say. Victory. So these are resources. We have materials and an dark or dark matter. I thought it was antimatter, but it's dark matter. Uh, and we see the resources here: drones, which we have none. We've got 295 crew, materials, dark matter, and fuel. You can always return your fleet to the starbase by clicking, and then return home. Crew is eager to regain our full sensor capabilities. To do that will require an extra source of energy. The good news is the tech research team has figured out a way to harness the station's core reactor. A smaller standard issue dio 
diothrium reactor. Uh, tech, click on diothrium reactor. So we research that, we spend some stuff for it. And I, I believe that research appears to be instantaneous, at least for now. Click on the ruined room below. And what we're going to do is explore, just like in uh, XCOM 2, we're gonna explore and try to get that section uh, cleared out so we can build something there. And occasionally, we will have uh, some events that pop up. So now we're gonna build this reactor. Gonna take four days. Station is fully powered. We've compiled a navigational map of all Federation systems and facilities as loyal members of the Federation officer class are duty to protect these facilities. In case of attack, these facilities will transmit distress signals to us. Depending on the level of danger in the area, you may wish to evacuate them. Uh, distress signals will always be listed in the missions panel. Click here to access it. So there. So there. Missions with a specific location will have a go-to button for convenience. Send your fleet to the nearby nebula. Uh, very good. We shall do so. And we've got a... An aberrant. A cruel. Is the name of this evil alien race here. Or whatever they are. I'm going to make him a little less likely to hit. Because he's already not that great. So, why not? Oh, that healed him. He healed himself. How could he? Well done. Good thing you turned up when you did, sir. Whatever that vessel was, it managed to chew up our only sentry ship. Did some nasty damage to a refinery. My crew's pretty shaken up. Good news, we got some fuel reserves from before the attack. Just give the world to transfer them over to you. All right, let's get the fuel. So, now this station here will generate uh, one fuel per day and then when we want to, we can come and collect it. So that's kind of cool. Tree 15 fuel. Not bad. Commander, with all the recent events, the crew felt it necessary to create a short briefing. Here it is. Upgrade the star base and the fleet. Recover Federation facilities. Investigate space pirates. So this is like broad strokes what we need to be doing. Building new room modules will require first carving out habitable space in the starbase by assigning officers to explore its ruined modules. And then we should build an officer academy to enable officer recruitment. That way we can train new officers to command any starships we build via the ship construction room. Following the invasion of those by those mysterious flesh vessels, most of the Federation is destroyed. Some facilities seem to have been overlooked. We send our fleets to explore the area in order to make contact with any survivors. So that's basically saying that we'll find more places like the one we just got. So we've been raided by a pesky space pirates in this sector. Once we have a functioning fleet, we should pick off some of the smaller ships in order to gain a better idea of what we are up against. Very good. Before you start, you should directly promote a new officer from the ranks and prepare a list of suitable officers for you to choose from. Okay, so we got a new one uh, right away. So we've got Adisa Kim while serving aboard the TFS Yuan as gunnery officer. Adisa Kim participated in the Battle of Nova Remnant against Ferdinand's Flayers, a particularly brutal pirate clan operating near the Federation Core. She was informed after the encounter 
that a particularly brutal shot she had executed during the course of the battle had cut clean through the engineering deck of an enemy skiv last vessel, which her father, a nefarious Federation defector, was serving. She soon got over it. Oh, okay. We're not getting the Santiago there. Uh, because we already got a... Oh, we've got re-rolls here. Interesting. Oh, and we can change their names. So if we don't like the abilities, we can uh, re-roll it. I don't know, man. Exploits. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think I'll just take uh, Lillian here, the Federation's foremost expert in teleportation technology, Lillian Galbraith. Sometimes troubles her fellow officers with her fixation on the process and experience of being teleported, unable to help herself, obsessing over the idea that each teleportation jump structurally rearranges her molecules, resulting in fundamentally a new version of herself. Federation counselors, though initially worried by the implications of her fixation, have since found this to be a fairly mundane psychological hang-up with few to any problematic side effect. All right, we'll take Lillian Galbraith. So, now, uh, we are probably going to be out of time, to be quite honest, because we have uh, we've done quite a bit, and this is pretty much a good uh, stopping zone for the moment. Uh, but suffice it to say, we should... Uh, at least get a ship going for her. So engineering, we have a night, night class ship, and we do have enough to construct that. She's kind of useless to us if uh, she doesn't have a ship. So while that is being constructed, constructed, we shall also. I don't know if there's an adjacency bonus here, but here's our space. We can build stuff here. I assume th some things will have adjacency. Uh, but I don't know that for sure. So I'm probably going to be trying to... Sort of... Build in the middle first and work our way out. Well, I guess that's how you have to do it, but... Yeah. Missing required traits. Oh, that requires level four there. Hmm. Hmm. Is this one a one-er? Yeah. We shall assign that, and the next time we shall see what happens. It's very likely that one of these, at least, is going to be an actual encounter. But thanks for watching, and hope you like this series. Go ahead and like below and comment. Let me know what you think. About Halcyon 6, Starbase Commander, and we'll see you in the next episode.